Something, something, something. Diamond rings. But I don't want to put it on. If I ain't got you, baby. If I ain't got you. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stay on the Line, a horror genre podcast hosted and created by me. And every week we talk about something horror genre related with my co-host, Zanny X. Zanny, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. You know, Spotify rap just came out. Let me get my little stats because since I'm a podcast and Anchor is partnered with Spotify, it'll tell me the things that came from Spotify. Now, this is not the same thing. Like, this isn't doing my podcast as a whole, just on Spotify. It's on many other different listening platforms. But... On Spotify, my followers went up by 75%. Um, Ooh. From this year alone, I've posted 26 episodes, and it's 1.3 thousand minutes of content. Uh, Spotify listed my listeners as, uh, their personality as enthusiasts. Your listeners are super fans. When their favorite podcast releases a new episode, they're among the first to know, going above to show their support. And then... Another thing was Stay on the Line. Um, they're, I'm their top, like, Stay on the Line is the top podcast for 10 people. Like, their most streamed podcast is the top one. It's in the top five of 34 listeners and in the top 10 of 53 listeners. So that's pretty cool. That's exciting. Yeah, it's not like a lot of people, but like, I'm number Whoa! one. We're number that's one in some people's hearts. In 10 people's hearts, you are number one. And none of those people are in my family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't even think I'm number... I think... Uh, let me check. Stay on line is in my... I Bitch, took a screenshot. <laughs> Stay on the line is my number three top podcast. And it technically would be number one. Wait, wait. How many did you have, though? How many podcasts did you listen to? Three. <laughs> three. But wait, here's the gag. Here's the gag. This is why it's not number one. Okay, ready? Guess what my number one podcast is? Um, White noise, sleep sounds. Oh, work. Guess what my number two podcast is? Calming white noise, awake sounds. Work. Okay. And guess what number three is? Stay on the line. Stay on the line. <laughs> with, <laughs> with how, does it tell me how many hours is in it? Um. Yeah, or, I spent 1,087 minutes listening to podcasts. Oh, I thought uh, for mine, but work. <laughs> um. Mine was the two minutes, the 82 minutes. <laughs> Um, also, it says 89% of your listeners discovered you in 2022. So that's pretty cool. Huh. One of my, obviously, like, I started posting more of the YouTube videos now. So, mm -hmm. like, that's also, like, everything kind of changes when people go to the YouTube one. So my interview with Chelsea Rebecca is now up to 569 reviews, which is cool because I realized I didn't know what tags were on YouTube like I thought I did, and I wasn't mm -hmm. tagging any of my videos, so no one could find them, and now people can see them, so. No, yeah, because I tried to find it to show some of my friends, and I literally could not find it at all, and I fully meant to say something. Well, now, well, when was that? Oh, this is like six months ago. Okay, now if you search, now if you search Stay on the Line podcast, it should pop up. Or, or any review, like, I've learned that I need to do that. So, thank you. Just want to say thank y'all for listening. I have thank my you so much. Monsters of uh, Universal blanket on. Um, yeah, and the ten, uh, the 10 top ones, thanks yeah. for being tops. Thanks for being tops. And to those who were, I was your top three, even though you listened to three podcasts, shout out to y'all. Hey, that feels personal. <laughs> Hey, I feel like this might be a little personal. I feel like it was a little bit of a duck. I'm trying to think of anything exciting I could share about my... my Your Spotify um, rap. The only cool thing is that my top song was Worth It For The Feeling by Rebecca Black, and I love that. Got the number one Rebecca Black fan right here. My top podcast Someone... is Girl That's Scary. They're per, there's um, a Dread podcast, like Dread Central mm -hmm. podcast, which is cool. They're really funny. Underneath that is D and D and D, which is a a D and D podcast, which is really yeah. fun. Dead Meat, which Chelsea Rebecca, shout out to Chelsea. She gave me this mug and some goodies. Chelsea's really fucking cool. And then I have Sibling Rivalry by Bob and Monet, and then Holland Closet with Jada Essence Hall and Heidi and Closet. I That's love my that top podcast. And yeah, I have a lot of uh, minutes in that. My top song is a Spanish song. It's called Vivir Así Es Morir de Amor. 
which is like to live like this is to die. It's by a song uh, artist called Nancy uh, Nancy Peluso, not to be confused with Nancy Pelosi. She, <laughs> she was. They have very similar names, which is funny. She was my number one artist, and under my top. Okay, now this has nothing to do with Dragula. Just catching up with us. My top artists are Nancy Peluso, Brie Runway, Lizzo, Beyonce, and Flair East. And then, for some reason, Swish Swish was my number fifth top Yeah, song. I saw that, and I was like, I don't want you to hear, I don't want you to come for me at all for supporting so, this woman. So, I think the reason why that is is because I did a Katy Perry theme show earlier in this year, and I did not know all the words to Swish Swish. So, I was like, sometimes when I'm learning a new song, I'm like, No, very I that. That's why I hate, um, I hate Spotify wrapped every year, because it's like, this was your number one song. And it is this is the <laughs> Yeah, this is the first year that it's been semi-accurate, but, like, and I do have a Kim Petra song on there that I was like, I don't listen to her like that. I just, like, need to learn the words to the song. Be was it that one? <laughs> no, it was the close your eyes. Close oh. your eyes. Which now, I would have really judged you if it was, like, at the body shop. <laughs> at the body shop. I hate that song. When drag queens do that, I'm literally, like, I want to die isn't that like nominated for a grammy yeah it's yeah and it, <laughs> i it's guess both. there's room for everybody let's just say that everyone gets their cookies all right sandy what are we talking about <laughs> today we are talking about um dragula titans i forgot what episode we're on episode six, six. whoa uh and speaking whoa. of Petrus, six 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 we are on episode six and yeah it is our wrestling challenge which I'm trying to ignore this hair moment that you're doing. I don't know what I'm trying to do. Yeah, what you sh- what you're trying to do, you should not be doing. That's okay. That's a that's a vibe. You look like Edward Scissorhands. Me, 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 me. Edward Tijeras, manos, manos tijeras. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. oh no, it would be more like Eduardo, Eduardo, manos de tijeras. Edward Scissorhands in Spanish. We finally got to the wrestling challenge that we've been anticipating. Yeah, which it was like the Rock Wrestling Challenge. So I think that they got rid of the Rock Performance Challenge. And I would be really happy if that was the case. There's a lot of things I'd be happy about uh, the Boulets doing, but they're just probably not going to do it. Yeah, um, you know what? Uh, <laughs> like maybe make you, a statement uh, about maybe, anything. Are you, yeah, maybe make a personal statement a little. Uh, or just, uh, or, they could, or instead they can just announce their tour and pretend like nothing happened. Okay, we're pushing through this season, y'all. We are just pushing through this season at this point. (laughs) Astrid comes back. They talk about Abora being gone. I don't care. Now, we are announced the Fright Feet, which is what, Zanny? What is this? What is this? Oh, my God. If someone doesn't do this Fright Feet, Abora would come back. What is this very dangerous, scary Fright Feet? Arm wrestling. Arm wrestling. wrestling. Wait, do you want to try to arm wrestle really quick? Okay. Okay. Yeah, now we're arm wrestling. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh no! Oh wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, so they had to do arm wrestling, which is just so scary. So scary. So there was scary. a few times because I do. You think you could have done this? Well, ha- yes. <laughs> have you seen the video of the guy and he's he's arm wrestling and his arm snaps in half? Uh, like is this from a movie? No, no, it's a re- it's a real video. Oh, I seen that from the movie The Fly. Mm. Or yeah, I think it's from The Fly. You know, I think I did see. Was it two men at a bar and it's just two of them? Yeah, but I want to. Yeah, I don't want to dissect it because then I'm gonna think about it. I'm gonna throw up. But I was thinking of that the whole time. Was it open were t- fracture? We're done. Yeah, we're done talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's that's just what I was thinking of. Um, but yeah, and they they just randomly. The other part too is like the winner of this gets to assign who goes on what team. Yeah. And, like, they don't, like, there's no strategy. Like, they just casually are like, I want to go against you. The only one that's, like, Astrid is, like, I want to go against Melissa. I want to go against Melissa. I want to go against Melissa. Well, the thing that is confusing to me is, like, you you get to pick, like, uh, Coco wins, and Coco picks the teams that she wants. But it doesn't mm-hmm. really matter because they don't do anything as something together. Mm-hmm. They're paired up with other people. So I'm like, so you don't pick the teams. That they're like we're picking the teams, but then you're going against one person versus the. They're not doing like a team thing; it's mm-hmm. just one on one. They don't have to do a, a whole choreographed thing together. And then also like plot twist, spoiler alert. I apologize if I'm ruining anybody's fantasies, but wrestling is fake, and they do go through oh. a training process. <gasps> you know that video where she's like, oh. "So what? wrestling is fake and it's not real," and so they're like talking about how they want. They're 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 nervous because they're like, you know, it's it's very like the Twinks against the Jocks kind of fantasy. Uh, and they're like, because it's it's Coco, Melissa, and um, 
Eva. And then it's Hoso, Astrid. Victoria. And Victoria. So it's just like, they're like, oh no, we're getting our asses handed to us. But it's all fake. Uh, but the now, thing is, it's still taxing. I mean, you had to throw your body around. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, you, they were making it out like, oh no, like, our team might lose because we're like, so we're, we're not we're not as strong as they are. Oh, yeah. But then it's like, bitch, it's an acting challenge. It is taxing, but it's an acting challenge. And Eva even says that. Like, Eva's like, we're gonna win. Like, we're gonna eat because it's acting. And I will say, like, the bits when they were doing the improv were so funny and so realistic and I was like living for that that mm -hmm. moment. I will say I wish we did not see the wig reveal in the practice. Yeah, it would have been more funny. And there were like a lot of the practice, like the practice was like 10 minutes and then the actual skit itself was like 10 minutes. So it was like 20 minutes of bad wrestling mm -hmm. in my opinion. So I was at the end I was like I'm a I'm a fast forward just a smidgy. I'm, I'm a glad sleep. that Ooh. they actually had someone <laughs> talking to them that was not a judge or anything like this woman had came on set and was like, hello, I'm a real person. We didn't get a director for the acting challenge to be like, hey, this is what you do. Because then we would have probably seen that back and forth between her or the, the director and Astrid, but we didn't. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't know. It seems like how they film things is very like its own dimension. We are yeah. only seeing some stuff and they don't for some reason want to record everything. Which I feel like if they started recording the behind the scenes things, we would get more episodes that had more dialogue in it and not people mm -hmm. just talking about random shit for 40 minutes. That there's, I just wish there was a little bit more depth. But yeah, it's cute. Um, they kind of talk a little bit about the track record as well. And then that kind of, someone kind of brings up the conversation as well to like Victoria. They're like, okay, girl, like let's have this conversation. Like, did you really vote on track record or did you vote on personal stuff, drama or, you know, techniques? And she is like, I went on techniques and she was like, personally, like I, you know, I know that wasn't Melissa's forte, but I liked what she brought, um, which is valid. I think honestly, te technologically, uh, personal and drama wise, she made the right choice uh, yeah. for who she put up for elimination the week before. Sorry to clarify. I don't like assigning shit. That's so much pressure. What I'd rather my just arm like, snaps? Well, that, well, that would be my fear. <laughs> so I would, I would have been like, oh, sorry. And bitch, she would have been like, I can't do this. And then Abora had been like, I'm here. That, I'm here. So yeah, the challenge happens. Was there anyone specifically that you're like, oh, I'm worried for you? Personally, I went in thinking wrestling challenge is pretty much camp and like glamour for the most part. So I was like, Melissa will probably do well. Coco will probably do well. And that's about it. That's all I thought of. I thought Eva would be middle of the pack. Yeah, I mean, I honestly agreed with everything. I thought everyone was going to be fine. I honestly really thought everyone was going to eat because it just like, this seemed like such a fun challenge. I don't, yeah. to me, this kind of is like high school field day kind of vibes. Like, <laughs> yes, very. you know, like it's going to be fun. The stress is a lot less, like it's more interactive. Now it is more taxing and like, I would hate wrestling and drag just because I don't like, I would be anxious uh, as fuck. Yeah, about your makeup smearing, lashes coming off. Your hip, you know, pad slides down or whatever. And like, they like those things. But for me, I don't like those things. Like, if my wig fell off, I would be embarrassed personally. But I know, like, camera time, they'd be like, you know, that's so funny. Oh, my gosh. Like, look at her. You know, and they'd rel you know it'd be great for TV. But mentally, I would maybe struggle a little bit. But I don't think any – I didn't expect anybody to do bad. But also, feeding off of that statement, I expected a lot of people to, like, really excel and really succeed. And I was just kind of let down. Like, yeah. I – I thought I thought Eva would do better. Honestly, Victoria I thought wasn't that great going into it. I didn't think she would do well, and I still don't think she was really a high placement for me. Astrid I thought was a little interesting, and Hoso, yeah, poor Hoso. I loved her look though. I liked the concept of the beat. I was literally just talking about my coworkers with um, how like I lived in Japan and having a beetle as like a little pet in a cage is like very common that you can get at a store like a horn mm -hmm. beetle. Um, so I like the, the concept of that. Um, it's just like the energy was very low. Honestly, the true criminal for this challenge was the angling. We didn't get any interesting like shots. And I don't know if that's because the ring was particularly small or if they had one camera or just two cameras. Like I wanted to get like close up shots, angled shots, you know, a, a bird's eye shot with a fucking, put a drone in there and just get the, them going back and forth and, you know, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then also, like, it's hard, right, in those settings when, especially when, like, the production is not as, as, as big as we wish it could be with, like, audio sounds. But, like, because it was all six of them, 
standing on top of each oh other. God. I like, they were all yelling stuff. And I was like, I can't even pay attention. I don't know what was happening. I thought that they would have like a moment to be like, my name is, they didn't have their own names. They didn't no. have their own wrestling names. Well, did they? they I, don't, so they, I don't remember. I, I know Eva had one that was like Thunderella or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, but like they thighs. didn't get announced when they were in it. Like, no, my name which is... they did do. Um, they did do like a video kind of like slow mo of like everyone's look, so we could see what it was, and yeah. that was really cute. But like, it wasn't like bringing to the ring, and then like you know Eva bringing to the ring Victoria, and then like them going out at it for mm-hmm. a second, and then like a few solos, and then like cutting into the group moment. Yeah. It was just everyone screaming. It, it honestly reminded me, and I hate this comparison because I don't like comparing to other platforms, but it reminded me very much of the energy of Camp Wanakiki where they, like, don't have... Ah! It's like that snippet where it's like <laughs> they've kind of recorded the main challenge and then they have, like, 30 seconds before they cut to commercial. So they, they like, tell everyone, they're like, just do something funny. And mm-hmm. so it's like, like 10 people trying to be funny. And since they're trying to out-funny each other, it's like 10 people doing things that don't even correlate. Like there's no yeah. team effort. Like the one scene, the one scene that really stood out to me is when they were like on the playground, running around the playground. And like one girl was like eating sand. One girl was like on the, the seesaw by herself, like and fell off on purpose. One girl was like doing the monkey bars and like fell. And everyone was doing such chaotic energy yeah. that I, I couldn't focus. And it gave me that energy. Like it was just a lot of people screaming and trying to outshine each other while also trying to do this scripted choreography what would you what would your wrestling character be? Like do you have a name or like a or an outfit concept you would want to do? No, I this just know like such a fun challenge. You could do so much with this challenge to make it fun. Yeah, all I know is I would smother people with my ass. Like you that don't was have just... a, like a specific look that you would go for, like No. Um but it also oh, it kind of reminded me of Chokehold. Do you know what that is? Okay, so it's a show that's in it's I don't know a lot about it, but it, it, it takes place in New York and New Orleans. Laveau Contraire does it a lot. And you create a, a drag persona that is wrestling, and then you get partnered with another person, and they sell tickets. And it's, like, a really big drag event. Like, it's a huge event. And you each have, like, a special power-up thing. Out of body, I don't know if you remember her. Uh, she was a New Orleans queen. She, like, dropped from the rafters into the splits because she was really flexible and, like, did a bunch of cool tricks. But I'm sure I would come up with something creative, you, you and don't have, you can't, like, I just come, I just came up with one, like, right now. I have, like, I would want to do, like, play on to, I'm from Spain. I would do a, a, like, a bullfighter, but I'm an actual bull. And, like, that's how it'd make it, like, really campy. It's like, I'm the physical bull, and bitch, I'm gonna fuck you up. Um, mm-hmm. In Spain, sometimes the bull is killed, not in all places, in my town, where my family is. We, we don't kill the bull. To my knowledge. I don't know if they did it. But to my knowledge, they didn't do that. But I would have been like a physical bull. and But a muscular woman like bull. And just like really. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been fun. So I'd be, maybe I'll be like La Torre or something. Female. That's cute. Yeah. You thought about this. Don't act like you came up with this on the I spot. I literally just came up with it um, <laughs> like five minutes ago. I was like, what would I do? Because like another thing, like honestly, just think of Glow. Like. You just do like leopard print something and like, or you could be like that, that one, um, what's her name? She's like a Jaguar or something or cheetah. I've never seen cheetah uh, from Glow. DC. Like, you know, DC comics. There's a character who's literally just a cheetah woman. Kristen Wiig for some reason plays her in. Oh, I love that. In, in, uh, <laughs> but it's a serious role for her, which is so weird. Yeah. She plays this, eat this villain in the Wonder Woman movie just like it's like it's the chance that you could either be like a like a very fictional like bird wrestling person or you can be like you know an amplification of something so you know what we need to go to an ad break because i need a poop yeah you did again (laughs) (laughs) i'm editing that out okay yeah okay i'm gonna insert my poop here and when we come back we're gonna be talking more about what Dragula <laughs> Titans episode six. Bam, bam, bam. Yay! Cause it's the what? The shits, baby. The shit show for sure. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Oh. Hello. Welcome. Welcome back. Did you enjoy your little bathroom break? Yeah, honestly, like, the way that my body produces things, I don't know how it works. If I dream everything.
everything I want to be. Zany, what Welcome. are we talking about? We are talking about, we're jumping right back into Dragula season six. No. <laughs> we're just skipping over five. We're just giving over five. We're jumping right back into Dragula Titans episode six, where we are discussing the Rock Wrestler Challenge. Slay, Honey Boots, House Down Mama. Oh, what would your wrestling name be? Xanastasia. Work. Or like, I don't know, Zan- Xanifer, Xanastasia, Zangelina Jolie, Xanifer Aniston. You should be the, the clapper, since you said that you like to smother people with your ass. Yeah, uh, or the smotherer. Remember the juicer from That's So Raven, where he, ju- he turned everything to juice, whatever he squeezed? What if you squeeze balls? What if I just squeeze heads? Oh. (gasps) And we're talking about Dragula. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, which I will say, like, I kind of expected, I don't know, like, I wanted a little bit more personality. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know why, like, especially Victoria, like, how much she's, like, ethereal. My table's shaking. She's, like, ethereal and, like, witchy and goddessy. Like, why wasn't there, like, a carry moment of just, like... (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, and then, and then like, goes into the, the slams or the tape the t- or something. Like, you can have fun with it. But it was cute. It just, everything kind of blurred together. No one really stood out for me. No one's outfits really stood out for me. The only one that really kind of, I mean, I loved Hoso's outfit. But the one that really stood out for me, only because it made the most sense to me, was, ironically, Eva's. And, like, no one really liked it. I just oh, thought really? it was the most, yeah. I like Coco's as well. But to me, like, I don't like when people wear breastplates and I can see the breastplate lines. Mm-hmm. And it would have taken, like, four, which she did say, spoiler alert, because she kind of mentioned at the end when she was getting criticized, she was like, this is not what I wanted to wear. Someone is sabotaging and stealing my stuff. Whether we know if that's true or not, we don't know. Everyone denied it, obviously. I've had to, like, dress her once when we did a show together. This is actually a really funny story. You will giggle bust so hard at this. She had a Alice in Wonderland dress. And we have the same dress. And so she was trying to put it on with her big breastplate and her big hips. And she was like, it's not going to fit. It's not going to fit. It's not going to fit. She was like, there was like three numbers left. I was like, there's got to be like a hidden zipper or something. She's like, no, no, no. Like, I know how to put this on. We got, like, she was like this. Like, it was half on. And we had to, like, pull her out of it. And then I was like, step into it. And we'll have to, like, you have to step into it. Lift it all the way up. Then you put your breastplate on. And then we'll lift it all the way back down. And we did it. And then as soon as I pulled it down, the zipper was right there. I said, Coco. And then she said, what? And I said, there was a zipper. And she said, no, and I said it's literally right here, and I unzipped it, and then the it like came off, and it would have easily, and then she just put it on and zipped it up, and we laughed for like an hour afterwards. All that work. My favorite look, honestly, I like Melissa's. I think that was a quintessential wrestling look. Like, don't go. And they the 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 key point. There was a second point of this challenge. They had to style hair. They had to style the hair, and Melissa took tracks of a different hair of wig, and put it into her black wig to give it streaks, which I thought was pretty cool. Are you okay? So. I, conspiracy theory, boop, 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 I don't think they styled hair. I don't think so at all. I think this is the same thing where it's like you have to create shoes. I think they had that hair done at home because they none of them wore the wigs that they were wearing in the, the dress rehearsals. Coco's wig was an icy white platinum blonde. And in her performance, it was a soft, natural blonde that was really teased up. Like you said, she had a, I think a Melissa actually did, mullet. though. I don't think so. And as Kendra, and I Kendra said that uh, for the pad, uh, for the prom look, Melissa had styled that hair, that updo, mm-hmm. in under ten minutes. Kendra said that she did that when she was there. Then maybe she did, but I don't see. I didn't see any footage of it, and nobody wore wigs that matched what they had on their heads when they were like goofing around. So I just, if she did, that's great. Ten out of ten, she's the only one that did it. But I think I, it's so it's so confusing, and it's also why I'm kind of getting frustrated with this season. Because these like challenges aren't actually real. I don't know, but that's what I said. I think I Conspiracy seen, theory. I could have seen Victoria and Melissa doing it. Eva yeah. was, was cool, but I don't know if she knew how to do that because that takes a lot of spraying. I could see probably Hoso doing it. And like Coco makes her own wigs. Yeah, so, I could like, see Coco doing it. I don't know. I mean, if they did, they did. But I don't. I didn't lose any sleep on it. Um, it could be one of those things where like on the other drag show where they're like. You could choose fabric from this wall, but obviously they have other fabrics, too, to pick from mm-hmm. that aren't on the display. So I don't know if it's something like that. I like how your cat is just, it's not in frame, but your cat is just sitting facing forward next to you. Yeah, she always does this, which this is the one that's normally vocal. So I'm like, not, I'm not going <laughs> to fuck with her. Bitch, you to grab that pussy, just shut the fuck up. Like, I'm like, she can stay. She knows I'm, she knows we're talking about her. Um, I will say Victoria did look cool. She did look cool. She did. She did look really cool. Um, and they all looked they all looked great. I'd had no complaints on their looks, honestly. It just nothing was 
Uh, you know, I didn't like Astrid's look. Um, I didn't like Astrid's look, and I did not, honestly, I did not like Eva's look. I, however, do like adding the cord to the tights and mm-hmm. then putting the, or adding the cord to the pads and then putting the tights over it, and it makes it look like popped out veins. However, it was very hard to see that in the main challenge. I don't know if it was a character choice, but the way that Eva was walking around seemed very like I have shit in my tights. Like she was very yeah. like, I'm going to beat you up. I'm like, are you okay? Like, I feel like she should have been like, I don't know, fucking grasshopping. A grasshopper wrestler would have been really cool. And she like does kicks or something. That was the challenge. The judges are Poppy and Katya. Very random, but love that for them. It also was my favorite judges judging and they like were the most communicative like, and poppy the first... knew what she was talking about too yeah which is i mean if you know a lot about poppy as a viewer like she is known for being like kind of off the wall and not making a lot of sense and being very um political art kind of vibes yeah. and uh what's it called when you like you purposely you do things in public to like fuck with people performance very performance artist um public exhibition <laughs> so like to hear poppy like be a normal person and know what they're talking about as like a solo individual was really fun and entertaining. Mm -hmm. And then Katya was just Katya, like really funny. I actually, I laughed at what Coco was doing in the challenge. I thought like using your breast to crush something was very much like that one YouTube video where she's like crushing beer cans with Mm -hmm. her. Or the the one with the girl. Have you seen the video of the girl? She stands behind another girl and the girl's like, like sitting in a chair and she just smothers her with her boobs oh no i haven't seen that but that sounds like an attempt to murder so yeah it's like a porn video and she's like it's oh, this little small I think I girl have seen that. and she's like no like don't and then like the dominatrix is like sm- like and she's like mm, mm, mm. and it's i laughed so hard that gay twitter ate it up see that's how i am with my ass i'm literally like i spread the cheeks go on the face i'm a smother have you seen that so animated like, video where like the girl like jumps on some dude's head and like crushes it yeah that's me <laughs> So it is announced that the bottom two are Eva and Hoso. Astrid placed high. Melissa wins the challenge. And do you agree with the bottom two? I personally, uh, I agree with the bottom two. Yes. The only thing is I would have put Astrid in the bottom. I would have done a bottom three and it would have been Hoso, Eva, and Astrid. I didn't like Astrid's look, respectfully. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't understand the fur jacket with the lizard on No, it was a denim jacket. What does that have okay, to do with see. anything? It was so weird, and I just didn't get the outfit. I didn't get the... Like they said a million times, it was another bodysuit with a tail for sure. But yeah, I would have done that. And then... Um, for the win? I don't remember who won, so... Oh, oh Melissa. Melissa. Melissa won. Yeah, I think Melissa did her to win. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think, think Coco really could have... She character. And she looked... Yeah. Good. And she, like, took the most... I mean, they literally were like, you need to use this as much as possible. And she used it very well. And she did a, like, a lot of the jump scares. Jump scare! she was doing Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of it. So I do believe that win. It looked like she was actually punching Astrid. Yeah, there was a few moments when I was like, oh, is this acting? Oh, well, she was in the bottom for her wrestling challenge in her season. So I know she was like, bitch, I'm going to go as hard as I can. This is redemption. You're not fucking with me, baby. Mm -hmm. The cauldron happens. I don't remember anything from the cauldron except for... All I remember is like Coco with the... Oh, 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 yeah, Coco. Okay, yeah, Coco has her drink on her titties. On her titties. And, then <laughs> and I she think drops. It, yeah, I think in the middle of Ho, like Hoso and Astrid talking about being gay and shit and all that, like <laughs> the camera zooms in on Coco dropping her straw and then struggling to pick up the straw, blows at the straw after she picks it up and then just puts it back in her drink. And then immediately spills the drink. <laughs> and then goes to say something after all of that and drink just boop. Absolutely sent me. And then it cuts to Eva being like, I am Eva Destruction. I am. And then it cuts to Hoso being like, I am Hoso Destruction. (laughs) Well, that, that, that reminded me of season three when like, Eva was like, I'm Eva Destruction. And Hollow Eve Mm -hmm. goes, well, I'm Hollow Eva Destruction. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it sent me. Um, The funny thing about that is Hollow Eve was 100% serious and that shit was so funny. Yeah, I I miss Hollow. I know they'll never come back because of obvious reasons, but like, I miss them. I love them so much. And then plot twist, uh, drumroll, guess who goes home? No one. No one. Not the week to do a double save. I was so confused. 
I think who I think Eva should have went home. She's been in the bottom the most. Like yeah, in the bottom. Three. I would have sent. I would have sent Eva, or I would have. I honestly would have had Astrid there, and I would have sent Astrid home. I would have sent on the tech technicality. If we're looking at both of these people, and they were partners, technically they were partners. This was their team. I don't know why we split up into three groups. Because I thought, uh, I don't know. It just makes sense if Coco picked the pairing. That way, sh you know that you're fighting those people and that you can stunt and choreograph with them. I don't know. It was weird. I would have picked Eva because on the technicality of, I think Hosa's outfit was better and more imaginable. And the other one just looked like Eva was wearing like street clothes. Yeah. I will say, yeah, that's a vibe because everyone did bring like a specific character essence that fit them. And while Eva's was a very solidified look that I did like... It was just like a wrestling outfit, and I think that's why I liked it so much. But I, it's, like, this is jagged. Like, you could have done it so much more. Mm -hmm. Like I you like said, you could have done a, a bull. The hair was cute, but we could have done. We could have done. She could have been a dead '80s rocker girl versus mm -hmm. like just a regular rocker girl. I but, just feel like she uh, was coasting. But they're both saved, no. and the Boule brothers, they say that hey, y'all are gonna regret this. Mm -hmm. So next week they're gonna do rock paper scissors. Um, someone's gonna bail out, and then Abora will come back. Could she still technically come back? Yeah. No! Okay. I think she even hinted on it. She was like, can I come back now? And I was like, no, 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 no. No, babes. No, no, no. Everyone has a challenge win except for Astrid. Everyone's got one challenge win except for, or for the other people that have wins. Everyone has one except for Victoria, who has three. Well, yeah, she is the first Dra uh, Dragula alumni to have three in the first five challenges, I yeah, believe, I saw is that. what I read. So I was like, you better, you better work. Mm -hmm. That was the end of the episode. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> listen to the other ends of the episode to tell you my top three. It has not changed. I want Melissa to make it to the finals. I know, which is crazy because the rumors told me that Melissa was going home first. Yes. So this is sending me that she is, I'd like, maybe we can get a final because I would love to have uh, Coco, Hoso, Melissa. Oh, so no Victoria. Um, I think it'd be a gag if Victoria went home. Same. I do think Victoria's going to be there. I can't see her not being there, especially with her like her resume. It just it makes no sense for her not to be there unless she royally fucks up. Mm -hmm. But to me, like when I look at a winner, like I want it to like be change different. them. And I just think that like Victoria winning, she would just be like work. And then which I'm not. I, maybe she would be really ate up. I don't know because they've not given us any personality. This not not Victoria. The, the production the has production given us no has personality. Not given anyone a storyline other than this is the second episode where the love triangle was not a main topic. But what and was it still the other was. Main topic? Nothing else. It still was, though, because this one, uh, Abora was, uh, not Abora, um, Astro was very like, I don't want to be involved. I'm trying to be my own person. And they, like, they went back and forth forever. And then in the boudoir, they're, like, in their little love moment with Hoso. And I'm like, I need backstory. I want to hear about Melissa's relationship. I want to hear about Victoria since Resurrection. Yeah, like, some I people hear... have not been on this show for four to five years. Why don't yeah, we know anything about them? That, like, I want to hear some things. I want to, and I, I was kind of talking about it to you last night. Like, this is Titans. I want depth. I, I don't want to see fuckery and drama and petty shit. I mm. want to see these people that I've worshipped and idolized. I, I would and love drama, love but I want to see who, who's causing the drama. Who really is causing the drama? I yeah. honestly, I don't. I, I know stuff about Astrid from this season, but it's because of their love triangle. That she talks mm -hmm. a lot and she's nerdy. And she's a furry. No, she's a scaly. But she said she's in the furry community. As a scaly. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's fine. Because Cloaca. She'll tell you what a Cloaca is. All right. Zanny, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram at Zanny.ex. You can find me on Facebook at ZannyX. And you can find me on Twitter as ZannyX as well. That's Z-A-N-N-Y space ex or z-a-n-n-y period ex depending on what platform you're on and on hive you can find me on hive where i am fucking it up being a dumb bitch i love it yeah you can find also me did you notice oh sorry no go did you notice how i've uh slowly converted almost all of the kansas city drag scene to get on hive because of you i saw i followed yeah. kiana yeah i got kiana i got carmella i got faye i got freddie mac i got Sheila Takyu, I got Regina Del Carmen. I got I'm like, I'm collecting y'all like trading cards. Mm -hmm. I want them to hire us. We are we are the spokespersons of Hive. I know, like, <laughs> but I need them to get it together. I made a post that was like, I every time I open up Hive, I love Hive, but there's so many things that they need to fix immediately or else people are gonna leave. 
Hi, yeah. I counted how long it took for everything to load in. 15 seconds. It took 15 seconds for me to not have a blank screen and then have stuff load in. I have never had that problem. I load in immediately. I have no issues. I have no qualms. The Shut only the issue fuck I have up, bitch. <laughs> the only issue I have with Hive, I kid you not, is that people will comment on my post and then oh. when I click on my post, it's not there. Yeah. But I have the notification for it. But I kid you not, like, look, ready? Okay, hold on. I'm showing you right now. Uh, I don't have it opened. One. Oh, two, this is so funny. This three, is so ironic. Four, <laughs> five, Wait, am I connected to internet? Six. No, you are. It's never done this before. <gasps> is it still loading? Yeah, I've never had it happen like this before. This is embarrassing. Hold on. Let me close it out and then try also, again. Also, Hive, if you're fucking listening, when I at somebody, I want their, like, Things to pop up when I start typing. Bitch is still loading. Uh, Where can we find you? You can find me on most platforms under Tara Car T E R R A H C A R D on Hive <laughs> on Hive Instagram. I don't like really being on Twitter. Um, you can find this podcast under Twitter Standard has Hive. been dirty to you. Yeah, have you seen that they're unbanning people? Anyways, or unsuspending people? It's kind of crazy. You can find this podcast under most platforms under Stand the Line T C. Or stay on the line podcast, and that's on Facebook, Instagram, and guys, leave a review. We got fifteen five star reviews on Spotify. We got a couple on iTunes. So leave a review. Share this podcast with your friends. When you share this, we're about to hit our two year anniversary of this podcast, which is crazy. We're on like episode eighty something, and like we're really close to a hundred episodes, which is like insane to me. That <gasps> we should do something this. special for a hundred episode. What are we gonna do? Let's get naked. <gasps> Boy, or we you should know. No. <laughs> um, and also, if you want to support this podcast even further, you can head over to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash stay on the line, where we have bonus content on there. I'm about to edit a sewing tutorial for y'all on how to make a hat. The poo poo pee pee tier. You get your name right out on the podcast, which there's three different tiers. There's the $1 tier where you get episodes of the podcast, the the audio version, and you also get the commentary tracks where we can watch a movie together at tiers three and seven, like the $3 tier and the $7 tier, you get the video edition of the podcast and other bonus content, early access to content too. So yeah, now I'm going to read off my patrons at that tier. So shout out to Matt King, Caitlin B, Willow Whisper, Kiki, dot com keith w paul bray zing cat coronation and rebecca carlson so if you want to join the podcast you can for as low as one dollar and you can really support honestly it, it actually like you might think like one dollar what's that gonna do it actually does like really support we're at 19 patrons i think we can get to 20 before the end of the year get us to 20 and that's the sleigh boots peace love and cherry coke go uh, live your best life, guys. I saw this video. Guys, don't do drugs. This girl did coke so many times that her nose, <gasps> her nostrils became one nostril and her nose collapsed. And her nose collapsed. Yeah, don't do drugs, y'all. <laughs> That's our PSA. We got new episodes every Thursday, so yeah. Yeah. I'm Tara Card. <laughs> and I'm Zany X. And make sure you stay on the <laughs> Cheers to that. Ah! <gasps>